guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Nadia and today's video will be dedicated to a technical question and particularly we'll see how to choose the best sofa so you can enjoy it every single day. So if this topic is of your interest, then keep on watching. Now choosing the best sofa might look like an easy task and once it was because you know the selection was reduced to function and a few variations in models but on today's marketplace it might be overwhelming so I thought it would be useful to break it down and point out the most important aspects to be considered when choosing a sofa. First of all is the seating depth which can be regular about 85 to 95 centimeters depth which can be comfort uh, that will start from 105 till 110 centimeters depth but also it can be enlarged or maxi comfort starting from about 120 and reaching up to 140 centimeters depth and even more. Now the taller the person is the deeper seating I would recommend choosing and all of it because of the comfortability of your knees and of your backrest. Now worldwide producers create standard models to be more cost effective and also time effective when creating sofas, therefore more competitive on the marketplace and reachable to most customers worldwide. So when it comes to sofas, the standard size were decided based on the average size person of the population, meaning for example that if 85% of the population, therefore of potential clients, is high between 165 and 170 centimeters, as an example, the producers of the sofas calculated to create seatings with a standard depth of comfort from about uh, 85 to 95 centimeters because this way a normal person can sit comfortably holding feet on the ground, ankles at 90 degrees and having a straight back, meaning uh, it can hold a relaxed and comfortable positioning which is the purpose of a good sitting. But what happens when a person is taller? Well, first of all, he or she will have longer legs and a taller torso. That means that to sit comfortably he or she will need a deeper seating and here it comes the optional almost every producer is offering today, a deeper seating. But if a person is smaller then look for optional cushions that you can put on the back of your uh, sofa and therefore reach a more comfortable seating. The second important aspect to be considered is the sitting size and also its upholstering. Now, sitting sizes can uh, be classified into basically smaller compositive modules or bigger one-piece settings. Now, the upholstery is very important because it must hold the shape of the sofa and at the same time be comfortable, not too rigid, not too soft. That's why most producers usually use a layer of polyurethane to hold the shape, which can be of medium or of high density, and a top layer made of feathers or memory foam or uh, other modeling materials and ergonomic. Now the sitting size is important for creating compositions but also for aesthetic purposes. Now the bigger is the space of the room the better will look a composition made of one piece seating. It will be a proportionate scale to the size of the room but also will look more expensive, more high-end. Just make sure that the entrance door and also other inter internal passages like doors and staircases will allow it. Now the third important aspect to be considered is the armrest types, which can be slim, medium, large or it can be accessorized with complements like for example coffee tables or libraries or uh, lamps. Now armrests are very important because they define the design of the sofa and at the same time this must fit the exigencies of spaces. Now therefore most producers today offer at least three different standard options. A slim size which is about 5 cm thick, a medium size which is about 10 cm thick and a large size armrest which can uh, overcome 15 cm in length. Plus 
more and more companies in search for appealing design and distinguished style offer different complements and accessories, uh, which can be attached to the armrest or can even substitute an armrest, such as coffee tables, libraries, uh, lamps, etc. The less space you have at disposal, smaller, slimmer the armrest you should choose. This will allow you to give the maximum utility for choosing bigger, comfortable seatings and at the same time do not compromise the overall design of the composition. The fourth important aspect is the backrest high, which is very important for the back comfortability. First of all, there is the low backrest, very popular, particularly in the latest moment. You know, it is very good, perfect for the lounge rooms and also relaxed areas to lay down and enjoy long conversations. Also, a low backrest will make you feel comfy and relaxed and enjoy watching, for example, TV. A medium backrest is the normal, the standard high offering a good back support and one can actually add some more pillows to adjust the comfortability. And also there's the possibility to have a high backrest, which is the perfect solution particularly for bars and clubs and restaurants because they offer more privacy. Now the backrest is very important, so choose according to the purpose use of your sofa. In any case, you can have some extra upgraded accessories that you can add and subtract at any time you need to help you adjust the needs you may have. For example, uh, choosing a pliable back cushion that you can ply uh, higher or lower, or a back that has a foldable mechanism, or a simple roller cushion that you can feel into the back uh, structure, not to mention that you can order a bunch of extra pillows to have at hand anytime you might need to use them. The fifth aspect, open or fixed sofa, which is better to choose? Well, to begin with, they have two different purposes. If you're looking for a sofa to place uh, in the living room and for enjoying long time conversations with friends and family, then choose a fixed model with comfortable large settings, good back support, armrests and a coffee table to create a pleasant convivial area. However, if you need an extra bed from time to time because you must often uh, host someone overnight, then you may need to choose an opening sofa that can be turned into bed at any time you need. These types of sofas will not be as comfortable as the fixed ones, mainly because it must hold inside an opening mechanism and therefore it limits the comfortability, so the rigidity will be higher and there are limits to sizing and accessorizing such a sofa, but it will comply with the functionality you're looking for. Now, a sofa bed will have one of the two standard openings, with folding slat and mattress or with a pliable slat. There's also a third mechanism, a third solution, which is more rarely, and it's named a half pliable mechanism. What is important to consider in a sofa bed is how the back structure and the seating cushions are made, if these are smooth or have stitches and other decorative elements. This aspect is important, especially if uh, it is a pliable mechanism, because lying down on a pleating seating, you will feel all the irregularities on your back, so sleeping might not be so comfortable. Yet another important aspect and very interesting are the relaxed mechanisms. For example, a relaxed massage mechanism incorporated in the back and sitting cushions. Now, this kind of accessories might sound extra to some of you and even unnecessary, but believe me, you will feel the difference and in time you will appreciate it more and more. Another important aspect to be considered is the coating. Coverings define the style and give extra value to the entire interior. Most producers today offer the following solutions. Leathers, vintage, nabuk, full grain, which is soft and delicate, hard leather, basic stamped leather and painted. There are many options, but the price is usually proportionate to the natural qualities of the leather pieces. Fabrics, natural fibers, for example, cotton, linen, silk, viscose, but also wood and cashmere, or synthetic fibers like polyester, acrylic, microfiber, it's up to you. 
I would, however, recommend choosing uh, going better for mixed fibers because of the comfortability of natural fibers it is giving and at the same time a higher resistance in use guaranteed by the synthetic fibers. By the way, Alcantara is a very special and unique microfiber and for you dogs and cats lovers, I would suggest going for this material because of its high resistance of scratches and cleaning detergents. This fiber has a higher cost, it's true, compared to other microfibers, but it is offering the highest resistance on the market today. Also consider other options, for example, synthetic leathers, which is a great alternative to natural leather. Moreover, today's technology and know-how allows the production of great quality that is almost identical by finish, by grain and soft touch appeal to natural leathers. And now arriving at the last, the economical aspect of the price point. Now, you might have already encountered that a similar sofa by design, by size and also by material may cost X to one producer and XYZ to another producer. So the question is why? What makes the difference? And here I would say, first of all, that as a statement, if you want, that is valid for all the companies. Everyone has the right to sell its goods and services at the desired price. It's a free market, free competition. Therefore, no one is kind of obliged to explain themselves why they want to sell to a certain price point. Clients are also free to choose what is best for them and take the product, the service that fits the best their desires, necessities and also values. So no judgments. But if we want to understand deeper how the price point is made, then here are the most inclusive reasons. Branding. Yes, of course, it will take a good share of the total selling price. The stronger is the identity of a brand, the more expensive and valuable its products will be in the eyes of the worldwide public, therefore more luxe and expensive. A brand that is on the international arena from decades, creating new collaborations every year with top architects and designers using high technology products and raw materials and confirming day by day that its products are worth your money, of course has a certain market value. It is not the same for fresh starter producers and particularly for producer companies that, let's say, replicate by mass production uh, similar designs and models produced by the first category of producers. And to this we shall consider another priceless addition, which is the collaboration with the best designers and architects to make unique creative objects. The fees of the creator, so the inventor who is behind the idea, who used its creativity to make something new, who designed the product, is an asset to the company, incrementing the value of the brand and adding value to the product itself released under license. Then of course comes the production costs, the handmade work and also the industrialist processes that have different costs. The more phases are requiring handmade working, particularly applications, detailing and other phases, processes where master skills are required, for example, uh, hand painting and also handcrafting, the bigger will be its final cost of production. Packaging is another cost that may differentiate from 1% up to 10% from the total selling cost. Some producers offer wooden boxes, others may offer carton boxes with angle coverings, while thirds will provide simple plastic packaging. These materials have different costs, therefore will consist in a different percentage share from the final price. Transportation costs also play a non-indifferent cost. Is the selling point in the same region or country where it is produced or it is an important product? Plus, don't forget about government taxes, VAT, regional and local fees, etc. Finally, there are also the marketing costs. The bigger the brand is, the bigger is the share it can and probably will invest in publicity like TV spots and specialized articles in magazines, etc. So 
The biggest players of Italian furnishings are known to invest up to 3% of their annual turnover in marketing costs, which is a return on investment, but however it is included in the final selling price. And also the selling costs, which is the monobrand stores and dealer shops for including the rent and the cost of the personnel, etc. So these were the main aspects to be considered and also please take into consideration what you need for a sofa, what are your expectations from your sofa. So the next time you go shopping, you will know exactly what to look for. Thank you for watching. I hope it was useful for you. Let me know in the comments. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer to them. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and we shall see each other on the next time. Ciao! Mwah.